is a bit of a tight fit. I don't know. You go through drills uh, where you have to try to get these on in, in the quickest time possible? Or? Um, well, generally what we do, we, uh, when we're back in Germany, we, from when we actually arrive in the, in the morning to get an airborne is three hours, and then that you've got to plan what you're going to do. You might be flying to the UK, to the tanker. Um, you've got to brief. The brief takes about 45 minutes, and then you've got 45 minutes to get dressed, get out, start the aircraft and get airborne. These straps actually engage into part of the ejection seat, so if you have enough time to eject, it actually slams your legs in so they don't leave them behind. So, have you ever had to eject? No, unfortunately, touch wood. No, I haven't, actually. I've, uh, there's a couple of guys I work with back at Bruggen who have had the, un the misfortune of ejecting, if you like, but uh, the seats we use are very good, they're very safe, and most of the guys I know have, uh, have got away with it if they've actually been in the seat parameters. Um, so, we're pretty confident if you pull the handle, you can actually get out quite safely and walk uh, on. I guess that, that's a decision you had to make pretty quickly, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think... I, the people I speak to, it's never actually been a cognitive decision. You know, most of them have been, it's happened so, something's happened so quickly, that it's just been an inst instinctive reaction. I'm not going to get out of this. this is what they had yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get away with this, so it's time to walk home, so. Yeah. Probably need a combination to get out of this thing. <laughs> this connector here provides all the, uh, that's oxygen for you to breathe. Mm -hmm. So the oxygen enters here and comes out here to your mask. This here is all your uh, microphone and telephony connections. Oh, I see, yeah. And that comes out yeah. of there. Mm -hmm and that actually mates to the edge of the ejection seat. So when you eject, this comes with you. Until you separate from the seat, then it will fall down by your side. Mm. And then if you just put your head in forward into here, right. and then just roll it onto your head and sort of wriggle it until your ears are comfortably inside here, and then we'll help you with the rest. Just keep those up. Play, Lieutenant. I'm ready. Let's take a look at that tornado. You might need your sit back. Oh, yeah, I may. Wow, there they are, the tornado aircraft. Wonderful. So, can we take our pick? Yep. I had the one on the end, that's my favorite. Okay. Before we actually, uh, you know, talk about the plane itself, uh, what the heck is low level flying anyway? Uh, basically, it's a uh, what we call low-level flying is below 2,000 feet, so that's actually quite high. But what we do when we come out here, we actually fly within 100 feet of the ground. It's what we call ultra-low-level flying. Normally, we fly within 250 feet. Because of the unrestricted areas out here and the unpopulated areas, we can actually get to within 100 feet of the ground, and we're not going to cause a nuisance or a disturbance to anyone with the noise that actually flying that low causes. Looking at all of these instruments, uh, well, first of all, I should explain that I'm not in the pilot's seat, I'm in the navigator's seat, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. So what would the navigator be doing with all of this equipment? Yeah, the primary task of the navigator is monitoring the weapon aiming and the navigation systems. So he has a radar screen, which he uses to acquire and lock the targets, and then he has his weapon screens that he can select various weapons, pass the information forward to the pilot, and the pilot can then prosecute the attack. It's very much a team aircraft. You have to work together as a good team to fly it properly. How fast does this jet go? About seven, eight hundred miles an hour at low level. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I've been very impressed. Are you ready to go? Uh, how fast did you say this jet went? About seven, eight hundred miles an hour. I tell you what, I'd love to go, but I, I think I've got an appointment in about five minutes. So uh, maybe some other time. Maybe some other time then. Okay. There's always next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, who knows? One of these days I may fly with the RAF. But you know, there is, uh, quite frankly, a lot of red tape you have to go through to fly in one of those jets. Uh, I had to have a note from my doctor and stuff like that, which, frankly, we didn't have time to do. But you know, I, I think I probably would have been turned down because of my. Uh, 
my, my, my flat feet, my flat feet.